Two dead LED lights for our entertainment. These are out of uh, the bulkhead type fittings that you get in bathrooms that go right up hard against the ceiling. And it's a sort of dome. And it reminds me a lot of the Chinese, uh, well, the, uh, they're all probably from China, but the eBay ones that uh, you can get from China that basically have this driver in the middle and then just the circular circuit board, the LEDs all around it. And sometimes magnets in the back are just screw holes. And it's designed to screw into one of those fittings almost like a replacement for the old 2D fluorescent lights. Uh, so these came with a message. Uh, originally, a person wanted to send me the whole fixtures. I said, just take the circuit boards out because uh, that will save a lot of space. So, hi Clive, here are those lights, units I emailed you about. The smaller one of the two strobes like a very cheap Maplin disco effect. The larger one pulses very dimly and it looks like a lot more of the LEDs are damaged. Those are one just as one properly popped one. Thanks to the videos, Fox and Abby. So let's take a look at this small one that has, it really is popped. You can see it there. If I zoom in on this, you can see it has the black spot of death in there. So that is almost certainly the one that's failed in that light. The other bigger one, I won't tip upside down because everything will fall out, but it, well, I'll show you one of the panels. I'll just fold it up like that. It's uh, the panel with uh, all the LEDs and series on it. And you can see this one here has quite a dark skid mark and you can see where the LEDs are on the other side because these aren't aluminium core PCBs. They're just standard sort of fiberglassish type laminate, and you can see the LEDs inside have gone quite dark. So my guess is that this one might be the one that's failed, but we'll take a look at that one afterwards. Let's take a look at this one first and see what we can find. So let's power it up for a start, actually. Um, I'll use uh, this one. So let's uh, connect it up. It's those little, uh, it's actually little crosshead screws. Oh, that's not gonna fit, that's not gonna fit. Screwdriver. There we go. It does have an earthwire coming out the side. I'm not sure if that would be part of the circuitry or that's just going onto a metal case. Let's not connect it. So uh, I'll just pop live in there and clamp it down and neutral in here. So it's quite odd that the circuit boards are covered by the plastic like this because to actually gain access to the circuit boards you have to take the cover off the light anyway. It must just be this extra layer of safety so you don't touch the circuit boards. So let's bring in the quick test. Where is the quick test? Here it is. The cliff quick test, which is a convenient way of hooking up mains. And let's pop the wires in and power it up and see what happens. It's just dimly flashing. Now, in the message, uh, they commented it flashing like a cheap Maplin disco light. Maplin's is a uh, company that supplies electronic and electrical stuff in the UK. And uh, unfortunately, they've just gone into receivership, uh, which is a shame because uh, if you look back at the their history. Uh, back in the 80s, their catalogue was the catalogue to have. Let's see if I can get this circuit board out. It just pops out. Okay, let's tip this whole thing upside down. So, what do you reckon? If I short this LED out, do you think that's going to reincarnate this light? Uh, what can we short it out with? Oh, I know. We'll short it out with a meter set to amps. So, I'll set it to uh, 20 amps DC and I'll put the probe into the 20 amp position and we'll power it up just double check I've got everything right when you put your meter to the amp position it uh, it basically is a dead short between the leads so you can bridge things out oh and that's it fixed it's that one LED so that's a uh, 130 milliamps flowing through that circuit which is actually okay that's reasonable enough so technically speaking if I just turn that off if I get the soldier iron on now Actually, do you know what would be an easy fix here? Uh, I'm not sure what the circuitry is in here. I'd guess the fact it was pulsing, it's going to be a little regulated supply. Uh, an easy fix would actually be to bridge out the whole circuit board. Let's uh, check that and see what happens. So let's just bridge that whole circuit board out. And the current is just 130 milliamps, and the rest the LEDs have lit. So that's a very easy fix without changing LEDs around like that. But let's try and get that LED off and just bridge that one out anyway. Now, in the past, I've bridged out the LEDs in the capacitive dropper-based lights, and it's not so ideal because uh, it means that there is a very slight increase in current through the remaining LEDs. Uh, I should... 
I'm just going to bridge, get those wires out of the way and bridge this out just uh, in case it's holding a charge across there. That'll do. Uh, let's uh, try and get that LED off. I wonder if I can just snip it off. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of come off. Not sure it was the ideal way to take it off. Yeah, that is an ideal way to take it off. In fact, that's worked. So let's get a bit of wire, solid core wire, or stranded wire. Let's use this stranded wire. And all I'll do is, since this is a non-aluminium core PCB, let's uh, zoom down in this. Let's get closer to the action. Since this is a, a non-solid core uh, out. Uh, aluminium core PCB, it should be quite easy to solder. I say this, famous last words. Uh, let's get some solder. I had some solder in the vicinity here. I've misplaced it. One moment. I now have more solder. So let's uh, tin those pads, if that's up to temperature yet. Oh, it's a bit crusty, but yeah, it's taking the solder. The old solder on it was really quite dry, possibly as a result of A, it's lead-free lead solder, and also it's been sort of grilled on a regular basis. And let's just bridge over those two connections. And then snip that. And that will be pretty much it working again. Let's uh, try it out. Let's uh, zoom back out here. Hook the leads up. Yeah, so that's fixed. Now, just out of interest. Uh, oh no! Tell you what. Let's open it. Let's open it up and take a look at the power supply and see what it is in the first place. So I've got the urge actually just to. If the case there's anything on the output of these, because uh, how many LEDs is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine times four, it's 36 LEDs. The voltage across that would typically be uh, 36 LEDs times about three volts across each. It's going to be about 108 volts across that. It should possibly have a resistor to discharge that capacitor, but uh, you just never really know, do you? I'll recklessly use my uh, not really recommended practice. I'll use the test meters to short that out. Yeah, nothing there. Okay. Let's open it up. Keep in mind there'll be another capacitor inside for the uh, main side, unless it's the type that, uh, that doesn't have that. Ooh. So the earth wire is just coming straight through. It's not connected to, in, to the circuitry in any way. There's the juicy capacitor, let's uh Now, some of you have said, why do you short capacitors out metal object? As long as you're not connected to anything else, you can do that. Yeah, that's dead. So what have we got? We've got the main supply coming in here, and it, there's a suppressed capacitor, there's... a fuse here, probably a fusible resistor. It just says F1. But I think that is a fusible resistor look of it. It's got the suppression capacitor, which it's not a class 2 capacitor suppression, it's just a standard 400 volt, 220 nanofarad capacitor across that. Uh, then we've got what looks like a common mode suppression choke, just a little tink dinky one. Then it goes through the bridge rectifier, and then it goes to that big fat capacitor. Okay, what's the chip? The chip is BP2833D. BP2833D. That is a bright power chip. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to go and get the data sheet for that. I'll be back in a moment. And I'm back. And being a bright power chip, it's just super standard. It's very easy to find the data sheets and in English. Uh, this is a very, very neat little chip, as most of them are. It's a buck regulator, which means that on the output side of it, 
Yep, it's got three pins, the transformer here, but one of them is not connected, so it is just an inductor in the series with uh, the output. Uh, like this, that's the inductor there. The power supply for it is quite interesting. Uh, I'm guessing that capacitor might be associated with the power supply. Yes, it is. Uh, the power supply for the chip is this capacitor here and these two resistors here that are in series. And basically speaking, that's a slight variation to the where it shows a resistor here for the power supply. It's got another one as well, just to uh, increase the voltage rating, the half the voltage dropped across each resistor. And then the capacitor here, I, I was expecting a smaller capacitor, but there's no need. It's uh, a little electrolytic is perfect for that. The chip is nice that it's a, it's a proper through hole. I say proper through hole. I just prefer through hole stuff. It's so much easier to work with. But the uh, it, basically you can set the current through the LEDs and it will drive up to a fairly high voltage of the LEDs. In this case, it's over 100 volts. And the pins, the only components associated with it, apart from those resistors and capacitor for the power supply, are the inductor and the diode and the capacitor. That uh, the inductor there, the diode, and the capacitor with a little resistor across the output. And the rest of the components are purely to set... There's a couple of resistors. I noticed there's another capacitor in that one. Connected between the output and one of the rails, the negative rail. OK. Maybe that's just more noise filtering. Um. Yeah. That's quite odd. Anyway. The, uh, it's got two resistors that set the current sense resistor down here detects the amount of current flowing through the inductor and at a certain threshold it uh, cuts off. The other one is a ROVP resistor over voltage protection and that's designed to protect when the LEDs have gone open circuit. It's quite a clever chip. It'll detect if the current sense resistor has gone short circuit. It will have a limit inside. And it can detect if the LEDs have gone open circuit or short circuit. And if that happens, uh, it does things like that steps the frequency down uh, and goes into sort of standby mode. Um, and the, normally the sense voltage it sends across the current sense resistor is about 0.4 volts. It drops that down to 0.2. So everything, it basically detects the fault and then goes into a very low current mode but keeps monitoring the output. Very clever, very neat. Uh, there is an internal diagram of it which uh, shows that the incoming supply via that resistor capacitor, as soon as it, it's got a cap of, with a zener of about 17 volts, but as soon as it reaches, it's got an upper voltage of 14 volts, it'll start operating. As soon as the voltage drops below 9 volts, it'll cut out. But there's no other power supply circuitry. That, those resistors and that capacitor are all that's needed to power this. And after that, it's just that 400 mil millivolt threshold for the current sense, which can also switch to the 200 milli millivolt, which they don't show here. And then it's got the over-voltage protect, which monitors the voltage in the MOSFETs. Very clever, very neat. Um, and the rest of it is really just... Oh, I should mention, it says on this data sheet, as it says in all bright powers, BPS confidential. So it's our little secret, OK? Don't share it with MD. It's special. Why do they do that? It's an open... They, you can download this data sheet from the website and it says BPS confidential across it. But but it's available for download anyway. So if you want to download it, the number is of the chip you're looking for is BP2833D. And uh, it's worth looking at. It's a very clever little chip indeed. So that's that one fixed with that thing shunted out. Let's take a look at the other one. I'll just put this out the way. I'll leave the soldering iron on so it's humming in the background in case we can fix this one. So let's uh, dump all this out. These just sit in loosely. The circuit boards have little notches in them that align with notches in the plastic panel that covers them. And these ones have taken a right good grilling. They are very obviously dark. They have seen quite a lot of current. Now, where's the one that was the most suspicious? The one that had sooty skid marks. Well, not sooty skid marks, dark skid marks in the back. I think it's those ones, isn't it? Yeah, it's these ones. So uh, let's uh, connect this up to the mains and see if it does anything. This, uh, the ability to just do little fixes like this 
is quite useful for these because it's one of these situations that if one LED goes, then, you know, it might just have been a rogue LED, particularly in the case of that other, that one we've just looked at. I'm just trying to unscrew the wires here. Um, and if that's the case, then bridging that one out will give it a new lease of life. Don't know how long it would last. Another interesting thing would be if you had these fittings and they were really feeling a lot, you could theoretically make a little modification inside. You could change the sense resistor, you could increase its value, and that means the output current would be lower. Not that that's kind of necessarily an easy thing to do. Well, it is for us. It would be entertaining to do. Unless you had a factory batch of these you got in and they were just all feeling left, right and centre and then you could set up a little production line to actually try and fix that. So uh, let's uh, screw this down. It's also got the earth terminal but it's, I don't think it's connected to anything at all. We'll find out when we open it. We'll open that as well. So let's power this up and see what happens. Nothing. So let's bridge out this whole circuit board with the meter set to the 10 amp range again. Keep in mind this is all live effectively at mains voltage, so we'll just bridge this whole circuit board out. Yeah, this, the fault is definitely on that circuit board. Is it that LED in its own? Oh, that LED has just popped off. Oh, yeah, it's those two LEDs have killed it. So technically speaking, if I bridged out those two LED positions, that would uh, give it a new lease of life. So I'll disconnect the power. We'll just slice off these LEDs. When you, uh, when you just take your pliers and just sort of slice them off, it kind of exposes the solder underneath quite well. It just, the LEDs are crumbling. That's not necessarily that great, is it? Let's bring in that little bit of wire again. Strip it. and bodge across. Again, if this is the same current limiting circuitry, you could just effectively remove a whole panel out of the circuit. It means that other ones would run at the same current. It would reduce the power dissipation intensity of the fixture, but it wouldn't uh, be adverse. It wouldn't damage the circuitry in any way. I'm kind of intrigued to see what happens when you go too low uh, with the number of LEDs. It has a sort of minimum cutoff that will detect that there are too few LEDs. So let's... Uh, go there to there and just bridge right across. So let's uh, tin this. And bridge across. Very easy to do. With a cordless soldier iron you could possibly just do it in situ. Right, is that going to fix it? I think there's a very good chance that is now fixed. So let's get the wire back in here. Power it up. That looks good to me. That is it fixed. Until the next LED goes. Okay. So let's open the power supply and take a look inside. Let's uh, bridge those out. This is where, if it was the capacitor is big enough, you could actually pop the fuse in your meter. Uh, spudger. Okay. So there's the output capacitor. There's an inductor. This looks very similar. Have they used the same chip or have they used a big daddy of that? Let's be careful with that capacitor. It could hold a charge. Let's just bridge that with one lead. No, it's dead. It's good. Uh, what is the chip they've used here? BP2833D. That's the same, that's the same chip. Okay. So they've sort of standardized on that. And they've got the same arrangement again. Again, they've got a non-class X2 capacitor, it's just a fairly standard one. But they've got the fuse, the capacitor, the common wood suppress choke, the bridge rectifier underneath. There. Uh, oh, it's, it's pretty much the same as the other one, apart from the slightly larger form, because it's got a larger capacitor and a larger uh, inductor and in output. But it's more or less identical, complete with the two resistors, feeding that uh, capacitor there for the power supply. Let's see what the value of those resistors are. 
seven five and four zero seven hundred and fifty k. That's quite high actually. The circuit must draw very very little current indeed. There's that little capacitor again that's not showing the natural schematic. Uh, just that little tiny capacitor there, which effectively goes from the LED negative, the look of it, ne LED negative, yep, to the incoming power supply negative. Yes, it is. It's the negative side to the negative output. I wonder why they do that. That would be, if I've got that uh, data sheet back down again, sudden avalanche of electronic stuff here, that's effectively connecting. If this is the uh, this is the negative rail on that side, it's effectively connecting across there. Odd. Is it for interference suppression or something like that? It's strange. I, I don't know why they're doing that. Um, so technically speaking, the current sense resistors, I can see two resistors that look as though they're in parallel there. Oh no, those are just two separate resistors. One for uh, the current sense and one is for the over voltage protection. One's 3.6 ohms and one's 1 1.8 ohms. No, I'm talking shit again because I, I think those are in parallel. They are the current sense resistors. So theoretically, if you remove those two resistors and you put a slightly higher value one in, that would reduce the current through the whole circuit. Oh, there's the uh, over voltage protect resistor there. Uh, okay, so just out of interest, if I power this up again, with it all just lying out everywhere, and then progressively bridge out more and more LEDs. What's what's it uh, going to what's it going to do? Apart from explosively blow the fuse in my meter. So if I power this up, just making sure I can know, can account for all electrical connections here. Will it work with just a single? Uh, so what's the current for a start? Theoretically, I can measure the current just by bridging one LED out. I can't see a thing now. Uh, let's bridge that LED out. The current is 140 milliamps. It's pretty much the same as the other unit. Okay, so what if I bridge from here to there? So that's one section gone out. Two sections gone out. Three sections gone out. It's still holding it on. Okay. Uh, let's work our way out to... Oh, there's another dead LED. That's the next one that's going to fail, isn't it? So... Let's see if I can uh, progressively bridge things out here. Oh, I've just popped something. Okay. Right. Oh, I've just destroyed it completely, haven't I? So, have I actually... Uh, I'll tell you what I may have done. Yeah, I have just popped another LED, haven't I? Okay, so which LED popped? Was it that one? Yes, it was. It was the one that was out. It, that was the final straw. Okay, so if that one gets bridged out, the rest will work after that. Yeah, anyway, enough bridging LEDs out. Uh, that, the final straw where was, there was the fact that when I bridged that out while it was on, effectively I discharged the output capacitor suddenly uh, across the, so the sudden, uh, the voltage across capacitor was quite high, so it would have resulted in quite a high current pulse, and that finished off that LED. But uh, what is the, uh, the data sheet had the minimum voltage uh, that it could handle before it would cut out, but uh, I don't know if I could find that fast. Uh, could I find that modestly quickly without sudden boredom setting in as uh, I crawl all over the data sheets? Um, minimum voltage, minimum voltage. Not seeing the minimum voltage, it's probably in another section of the data sheet. Uh, if I recall, it was really low. It was something like I think it may have been as low as 15 volts that it would handle, which would effectively have been about five or six LEDs. Yeah, but anyway, relatively speaking, although they've failed, I'm not sure how long they lasted, 
It's the same thing that, oops, sorry, I just uh, whacked the camera, will I? It's the th same thing that they just grill these LEDs. Uh, there's no, it's not the thermally conductive laminate, so they have been getting very hot, particularly inside an enclosed fitting. And uh, the current they're running them at isn't really dramatic, it's about 150 milliamp, which I suppose, given that they're all in series, is quite a lot for those LEDs. That puts it roughly about half a watt per chip. And they are well spread out, but they've not got the thermally conductive laminate. So I wonder how long these actually lasted. Um, if they'd run it down at 100 milliamps instead and maybe put more LEDs in spread over a large area, it would probably have lasted longer. Also noting here that they're all looking a bit dark, but some of them are really clean looking. They're not looking dark. So some have taken it worse than others, the, the thermal grilling. I wonder what caused that. Maybe it was just the coupling from the back plate onto the, you know, maybe it was touching the back plate of the light and it just kept it that little bit cooler. Yeah. But anyway, it turns out they are repairable. You can work out which LEDs have failed, particularly ones with the black dot of death in them. And if you bridge them out or whole sections out, if it's this type of circuitry, you can reincarnate these light fittings. And that's pretty useful. And now, before I finish, I'm going to change the meter lead back to the normal setting so that I don't accidentally use it in the current setting because it is a dead short circuit. And if you go to measure voltage with it, when it's a dead short circuit, you'll short something out. But uh, yes, good result, really. I got all the lights working again, and uh, it was quite neat circuitry inside.